Okay, hi everybody. Um, I'd like to uh, thank you very much uh, for that very nice introduction and um, for uh, inviting me to speak today. I feel really lucky um, to be here and to be able to share our story of bringing the Women's Library collection to LSE. Um, I should say at the outset and declare myself, I am a librarian. <laughs> Um, and I'm aware that, you know, here at this conference we have librarians and archivists. Um, and I think that that's a really good thing. It, it's sometimes easy for us to forget, or certainly for me, to forget that there are different professional practice, different professional outlooks amongst librarians and archivists, but in a good way. Um, I think we both really support each other. I work in a university library, we have archivists and librarians, and it's a, it is a really good collaboration, a really good bringing together of those different skills and outlooks. So I hope um, today as I speak, the archivists will forgive some of my librarianisms and uh, hopefully some of the librarians will uh, support some of those librarianisms. So we'll see how we go. <laughs> okay, so my, uh, my talk um, is really going to be focused around um, the, the women's library collection and, and bringing that and into LSE. And it's really um, a sort of a tale, I suppose, of, um, you know, supporting collaboration, sometimes in difficult circumstances, um, of inspiration, using collections for inspiration, um, and, and, and also openness, this theme of sharing and openness um, that we, we all, I think, subscribe to now, but certainly wasn't the case, and certainly wasn't the case even when I started my career. So I chose this title with all its treasures safe locked and it's a quote from uh, Virginia Woolf's uh, Room of One's Own and it's um, a little snippet. Uh, she wanted to go and visit a library, a college library in Oxford and she was refused entry um, amid much consternation um, because she was a woman so she just sort of went to walk in and obviously this was like... Ah. So I think it's quite a good example and a nice quote really to, to show the way that things have changed so dramatically that at that time, you know, libraries were about holding it, containing it, collecting, you know, putting boundaries around it and restricting who could look at it and making judgments about the people that, want, you know, that wanted to look at it. Whereas now, I think we're very much more working incredibly hard and, and the, most of the presentations today, you know, this conference are about how to attract people, how to draw people in, how to share collections. I also like the, the, the image from the, the, the copy, which we've digitised this. This is on the digital library amongst some other of our rare books. And I like the way somebody's written treasures on the, on the, uh, the cover there. Okay, so I'm going to uh, talk a little bit, as I, as I said, really, just to, to give a brief sort of description of, of how the Women's Library came to LSE and some of the work that we did to, to engage with the, the, the audiences, very passionate um, audiences and stakeholders in, uh, in the Women's Library. What we were aiming to achieve and what our inspiration, why, why did we do this? Um, what we've managed to achieve, and I've put so far, because it's always a work in progress, there's more to do. But I just wanted to start with a, a more of a personal note, my, my sort of emotional pitch to you, really, which hopefully I'm speaking to the converted. But it's when I was asked to do this, and I, I quite often ask myself this, why I have quite a, a kind of emotional reaction to collections rather than an academic one, I would say. And sometimes I wonder why, why is that? You know, why have I spent my, my working life with collections? And I think really it, it is about, for me, it is about um, the way, and I, I think that the talk from the National Holocaust Centre and Museum yesterday really put this much more powerfully than I can, is the fact that these are a record of people's lives, that, of things that happened, and they help us understand the past and sometimes come to terms with the past. But they also help us live better now. They help us face the future and understand our future better. And I hope um, have some influence on trying to make the world a better place, make us better people. And sometimes that's challenging. <laughs> There's a lot to ask of collections, but it's something that I believe in and, and gives me inspiration in my working life. So I've chosen here um, a, a, a sort of image from our latest um, exhibition. 
Um, this has been curated by our, our curator, Indy Buller, uh, who came to LSE Library with, uh, with, the L with the Women's Library. And he's done a wonderful job, I think, of curating this exhibition from one of our most important collections, the Booth, the Charles Booth Archive. And his, this was his study of poverty in London. And it's, it, what Indy, I think, has done very well is really be able to show the way that Booth was focused on a particular question and then he used a variety of research methods, it's quite new at that, and innovative at that time, to, to do quantitative research. There's lots of data and statistical data, but also to use qualitative research. There are lots of interviews, the police notebooks, you know, where people went and talked to the actual people. And then to marry these two things, these two aspects, so that there is, you know, you, you find out more this factual information, but you also feel more because it's tangible. You can hear the voice of the people that he's studying. And then to visualise all of that into these wonderful maps that are colour-coded. I think it's a wonderful collection. And it's also, it, it keeps evolving. So it, it is an archive, it's a paper archive. <laughs> But it was digitised, it was quite an early digitisation project. So it's been digital for a long time. The, that original digitisation is looking a little bit elderly now. So um, we've got a project at the moment, it's the centenary of Charles Booth's death this year. So we'll be re, you know, relaunching the, the digital collection. We've also made a mobile app called Phone Booth for this. So this is something that, I know, I can't take credit for the title. <laughs> Um, so I think whoever did, I think it was our colleague Peter Spring, should, should have got some, a bonus, I think, for that. But uh, don't tell him that. Um, so the, the students are able to go out and, and use the collections actually in the field, uh, geography students. Of course, now we've got an exhibition and who knows what else. And I think it's just a really good example of how collections do live. They don't stay static. They're, what their, their purpose continues to evolve. And with, if we use our imagination, we can keep making new things and keep reaching new people. So that, that's my, my sort of emotional pitch to you, which I hope makes some sense. So on to more sort of factual matters. Um, this, I, I, I said that I would talk a little bit about bringing the Women's Library to LSE. And I'm sure lots of people in this audience will know the story of this and remember the, the, the sort of controversy and the heat um, that surrounded this. When the, the Women's Library collection, as I say, has a, a passionate um, group of supporters who really care about it. Um, and they were obviously very worried in 2012 when the Women's Library, which was housed at that time in, in the London Metropolitan University in its own building, and you can see the building. These are all headlines from The Guardian uh, from various points in this story. Um, they were very worried about it and um, angry as well. Um, that, so there was a big campaign to save the Women's Library. And they had a, a, a strong sort of um, you know, petition. And what the, the campaigners, what that group of campaigners wanted was to keep the collection together um, to make sure that the staff were still had their jobs, um, and that the, the collection stayed within its building, within the, the, the building that had been made for it in, in Oldgate in East London. Um, and there, there, was, there was a lot of controversy, and obviously the, uh, you know, LSE joined, you know, made a bid, along with other libraries, you know, the London Metropolitan University had asked for a new home, LSE stepped forward, along with others, to, to offer it one. Um, and it, it did get very heated, it was very controversial, and we were really sort of feeling, you know, the, the headline there, you know, were we saving the Women's Library or abducting it? It was quite hard to take at the time, I have to say, if you were at LSE, because we were working incredibly hard, and we, you know, we felt, could understand completely the passion and, and the concern, but also knew how hard we were working to, to care for this library and make sure that it was okay. So it's, it's a good example, again, of how collections are emotional. You know, they do, they do inspire emotion as well. Um, they're not just sort of things in a box that, you know, tell a factual tale. You know, they, they really mean something to people. So we, this, you know, eventually, um, you know, LSE, we, we did bid, LSE was the successful bidder, um, and we did, um, our bid uh, 
it was very detailed, and it, but it preserved essentially, we were able to keep the collection together to transfer all of the staff to become LSE members of staff, move with the collection. But what LSE couldn't do was to keep the building. Um, and we were always very clear about that, that it wasn't practical, it wasn't affordable for LSE to do that. And so we were always very honest about that. And I think that we pleased a lot of people, we didn't please others because of not keep, you know, keeping the library in its building. So you rescued or abducted, you have to decide. <laughs> So the, the Women's Library timeline, the timeline of the work to, to bring it, I've included a slide here of the Women's Library timeline, um, which is a, another sort of digital library project that we did to, to be able to showcase the collections in quite a nice way, I think, on a, on a timeline. So you can zoom in and out, you can move around in time and see quite a, a, a very wide range of images from the, the Women's Library collection that illustrate certain points and campaigns. And I think that was, a, we, we did that, we wanted to be straight, very quickly to be able to, to get collections out and to, and to show them online. So you can see the timeline of the Women's Library coming to LSE. 2012 was when the, you know, the, the call first went out and our, our bid went in and was successful. The library transferred to LSE in 2013, on the 1st of January uh, 2013, and that was the collection and the staff. And through that year, we worked to transfer the collection physically and the staff to move into LSE. And then in 2014, March 2014, we had the official opening. We had to do quite a lot of building work in LSE Library, so we built a new reading room, a, a big new collection store, and moved some things around so that we could have an exhibition gallery and also an education and outreach room. So there's quite a lot of work to do. And the exhibition uh, gallery was the last piece um, that, we, that we completed, and that opened in 2015. So that was our timeline of, of moving it across. So it was a big project. Um, you're talking two years, you know, two or three years. Um, and it's, it's still ongoing, but it now feels like this is normal. And I hope for colleagues that move with, LS, with Women's Library to LSE, they, their careers have developed now at LSE. And so it, it, it feels like more normal that we're, we're one whole. I, I hope my colleagues would agree. I'm sure they would tell me if they didn't. <laughs> so I, I suppose the question, I mean, a lot of people asked this at the time, you know, why did LSE step forward when this call went out? Why, did, why should LSE take the Women's Library? And I think for some people it wasn't immediately obvious, although for us, I think, who, who knew the collections, it was. And I think a really important part and something which I... Um, you know, take a lot of pride in, draw a lot of inspiration in, is the founding, of, the founding principle of the British Library of Political and Economic Science, which was set up a year after the London School of Economics um, by Sidney and, and Beatrice Webb. I always try to get Sidney Webb into anything that I do or say because I think he was an amazing person and, and Beatrice as well, but Sidney had a particular interest in the library. Um, and I'm always very glad that he wasn't my boss because he was a really hard taskmaster. If you go through the archives of the librarian at that time, he, he worked him very hard. <laughs> but I think it, it's worth, this is from the trust deed. And I think this is, again, is a statement of intent about the, the power of a library, the job of a library. is not just to be a building where people come sit and use things. It's about promoting the study. And, and general knowledge. So there's a much more active role there. It's not a passive role, and it certainly was never envisaged as such by Sidney Webb. And you have to forgive the, the phrase mankind generally, because that was just the times. But it was always intended to be open to everybody. So it's quite clearly stated in the trustee that the British Library of Political and Economic Science was open to anybody who wanted to study and understand in this area. And that's quite unusual and certainly a contrast with Virginia Woolf's experience um, at that time. And so I think that, that's key um, to making sure that by bringing the Women's Library collection to LSE, it was not going to be closed. It was going to be more open, if anything. That's what, that was our aim, to keep working to make it more open. 
So in our bid, when we, we wrote a very detailed, carefully considered bid, and, and this um, you know, was a very important phrase, I think, you know, certainly for me. And this is about saying, you know, avoiding the risk that by bringing a collection like this, it was coming to an ivory tower on the old witch and nobody would be able to look at it. It would all become very academic and it wouldn't be fun anymore or accessible. And this was a very clear statement in that, that our, our aim, our inspiration was to continue the work of the Women's Library, to build on it and to make sure that we pushed ourselves at LSE to open up to new audiences. And certainly new audiences for us. So LSE Library obviously is a, a university library, so we, we do serve our, our academics and our students very well. It, is a it has a national role, so we're used to, and again, we do this well, uh, supporting the wider uh, social science research community. And we do have public you know, members of the public coming in to use the collection. What we had less of at that time was um, school-age students. So we really hadn't done very much with that. We had supported the work of the university in widening participation and we would have visits, but it wasn't a core part of our, our work. And I, I, I've included this. I can see a few people smiling. If you've got children, you know what they so the, the, this, I love this because it's two. These are all users of LSE Library with a totally different view of the world. Um, so the first one, you know, our government professor, he's a, a wonderful guy, and he he loves coming into the library, but he gets very distracted. So he'll come in for something and then get lost down in the mobile shelving. So, sort of, oh, you know, oh, I've got this. Oh, we could do, you know. And so he says it's, you know, is dangerously enticing because it distracts him from what he's come in from. The second quote, th this year's six schoolboy is my son, <laughs> who's no longer in year six, but it's a great quote. It's short, pithy, um, but it's, uh, he's a, a man of few words. And I was trying to show him, you know, what, what do I do all day? And I was showing him the timeline when we did it. And he sat very quietly poking at the iPad. And then he just went, cool. And then probably said, can I have some toast and marmite or something like that? But I think uh, it's, it's a good Good contrast. He, he enjoyed that just as much. He, he might not say a lot, but he, he enjoyed it. And that, th these are the audiences that we've got to cross this. And it's really about showing that there was no intention to be an ivory tower. So having said that, that was what we were aiming at. That's why we did it. That's what we were aiming at. Um, so what we really, um, you know, we had to get to work then. So we, the school, uh, LSE, supported this endeavour, you know, very strongly and with uh, serious investment. So as I said, we were able to um, open a new reading room. This was very important that the, the building at, um, at the Old Gate, where the, library, the women's library had been, had a very good reading room, you know, quite a large space. So we committed to uh, open a reading room at LSC. It's a 40-seat special collections reading room. And we came and visited the National Archives, actually, to see how you did things. So we nicked some of your ideas. Um, and so we had a, a wonderful opening um, in March in 2014. And I, I just, I've included the picture of, of my predecessor, Liz Chapman, who was the librarian at the time, because it's very important she was a driving force behind this, very passionate about the Women's Library. And really, it was her energy and commitment that drove us all on and, and made it possible at times when it was a big project to take on. And this is her with Mary Robinson, um, the former president of uh, Ireland, opening the library. But also, rather not just a building, again, it's about inspiration. This, on the day of the opening, um, there was a campaign outside the opening from the Save the Women's Library campaign who was still angry and upset. So they were sort of campaigning a, a, against us, essentially. But the student union also, um, they uh, c conducted a march, and this was inspired. This is Clement's Inn, which is just at the side of LSE. And the, the black and white picture is a march of women who've just been released from prison. And they've been on hunger strike and, you know, in prison for campaigning for the vote. And that's why they've got arrows on, on, their, their, on their dresses. 
Um, and so they're marching down Clements Inn. The students were inspired by this. And so on the day of the opening, they conducted their own march um, in the same place, um, you know, different slogans, different campaigns, you know, different things that they're, that they're working towards. But I thought that was really, it was a lovely event. Um, and it, it, I think, again, it just shows how, you know, things change, but there's still that inspiration that people can be inspired by collection to actually go and do something. And so the student, this is what they, they did, which was really nice. So that was the opening of the reading room. Um, we also, um, at the same time, had the, uh, the um, education and outreach room, which is a great space. So we're able to, you know, to do all sorts of activities in there, bring the collections in, have hands-on session. I'll talk about that a bit later. It's not such an exciting picture, so I didn't include that on there. Um, but the exhibition gallery, um, that opened um, last year. Um, and that's a, a great space. It's quite, it's a, it's a relatively small space, um, but it's, um, we were able to use it very imaginative with the design. So we have, a, this is a picture of the digital wall. So we have a big uh, digital screen there. So we're able to do lots of um, things with digital collections and have quite a powerful display that people can see as they walk by. It's in the entrance of the library. So people kind of clock it and, and can come in. And then we also have, you know, display cabinets. So we can have a really good mix um, of display cases um, and also, uh, you know, digital uh, materials. And we run about three exhibitions a year. And this one at the moment, the previous one was, um, you know, had more women's library collections in it was around the 1866 petition. This one is on Booth. But that's proved to be really popular and, and that's open to anybody. Anybody can just wander in. So that's, that's worked very well. We, the LSE is famous for its public lectures. These are free public lecture series. Um, and uh, we've worked very hard to, to, to make connections between the collections, the exhibitions, the kind of work that we're doing, and to connect that into the public lecture programme. Um, so again, we're reaching you know, new audiences there, that public engagement aspect, and, and, and reinforcing the connection really between the library and the school and, and the academic and sort of you know, thinking, you know, their public thinking work. And this was um, a, a, a lecture which we had. This is um, the, the director and the producer of the film Suffragette, um, which happened sort of early in the year. So Sarah Gavron and Faye Ward, working with um, Elizabeth Crawford, who is the historical advisor and is a member of the Friends of the Women's Library. So we were able to organise this lecture. It was very popular. So we had a lot of students, uh, lots of members of the public, and a really lovely um, turnout from the Friends of the Women's Library. They all came. We had a little sort of party party as well. So it was a, a really lovely event, a, a very interesting lecture. So, so far, we've, we've run probably five or six of these, and we've had about over 600 people attending. So it's another good way of, of you know, being able to share the collections. We've done a lot of work with digital. I've included, I've shown a few slides. So some, some of this is quite traditional sort of digitization in a sense, you know, where we've digitized things. We've used the timeline as a means of um, displaying it. And there, and there is a huge range of collections in, in the Women's Library. And, and we've done a lot of work to digitize those. So we have digitized a teapot, a pair of shoes, lots of banners. Um, as well as, you know, books and pamphlets. So we've really tried to, to do a really high quality work on that, to, not quite as ambitious as we heard about yesterday, which I'm jealous of, but uh, we, you know, it, to tr really try to make it a, 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 an interesting display for people to, to kind of introduce them to the collections. We have also done a, a mobile app as well. We we're quite sort of keen on mobile. Having had phone booth, we, we sort of thought we would try to sort of build on that. And we've created a mobile app um, where people, um, you know, people can download the app and go on a guided walk. Uh, there's several guided walks around London. And then you, you can draw in, there's a narration, you can draw in items from the collection so that it makes it more of a, a sort of interactive experience as you're walking. And, our inspiration for this really was that it was quite a popular um, element of work at old, uh, you know, at the Women's Library when it was at Oldgate. 
um, to have these kind of guided walks and people would do that. And we wanted to be able to continue to support that, but perhaps also add some uh, digital element of it and, and get the collections a bit more sort of, you know, immersed in that. And so this was our piece of work to do this. And we had some support from Arts Council England as well that, that helped us to do that, which we were very grateful for. And again, this has proved very popular. There's a lot you can download it on the App Store. It, it, it you know, it, it was an early thing. None of these things are perfect. We'll probably go back and tweak it, but it, but it works, and it's, it's proved to be popular. So back to, um, I think probably the bigger challenge for us really was to build the education and outreach program, and. This, I, I think they, they are a tough audience, you know, children, I've got two of them and they're there with my nieces. They're not easy uh, to engage in anything other than Snapchat and um, pictures of cats on the internet, uh, in my niece's case. Um, so, that, you know, it's quite a tough audience for us and it wasn't something that we were used to doing. Um, so we needed to get, um, you know, some you know we needed to get some help really with this and think this through so what we were able to do with support from Hefke which again you know we're very grateful for we took we set up a new role at LSE the education officer and her role was really to design to, to from scratch really design a education and outreach program um, and really then to work with our, our experts, you know, so people that are used to working with students and, and, you know, supporting our users, but in a slightly different setting to train them, you know, and to support them so that we could expand into this sort of new um, audience sector. So that role started, she came, started in 2015 and with, the, with the aim really of engaging external audiences. So school aged children, but also, you know, local community groups, you know, so that we were able to support adult learners and, and general interest, um, you know, people that had just had a general interest. And we've had uh, probably a year, you know, a bit of setting up, lots of making connections with these groups. And we've had about a year now, and it has been very successful. We've got some nice quotes here. I like the, the one, it was amazing. I learned that archives have old documents and information. It's great, isn't it? Just tell it like it is. <laughs> so I, I, I like that. that that's, you know, they're, they're fun. It's good fun. I do like this aspect of our work. So that so far um, in, in the sort of first year, we've been able to reach around, we've had about over 600 um, secondary school students come into the library for sort of hands-on sessions, you know, handling the archives and support, sort of enriching their learning really, when they're learning about, you know, suffragettes, various, you know, aspects of their GCSE, they've been able to come in and, and work with the collections, which obviously they've enjoyed. So actually touch things is, is quite fun. We've had um, supported also extended a little bit more what we do for HE students who are not LSE students. And we've also had uh, you know, nearly 200 adult learners come in from community groups, which again, you know, very wide sections, so people from all over the place. Um, I noticed some people from Lincolnshire, which is where I'm from, had, had come in. So it's, it's really good to, to have that, you know, that number of people coming into the library and, and using the collections. So next steps for us, um, it, it really building on this, um, I probably had just walked into the room at that point and said, does anybody want a biscuit or something like that? So they've all looked up and smiled. But, uh, so we, we, we'll consolidate this and, and keep working to, to develop our learning programme for schools, to continue the work to embed the library and, and the collections into the public lecture programme so that it is in context. It's not about the library, it's about the subject and we're supporting it. And very importantly for us, to, to continue to work with our stakeholders, our friends. I talk a lot about the Friends of the Women's Library who are a wonderful group you know, care passionately about the library, really are interested and support us, but also are a critical friend. You know, they do question what we're doing. Um, they do remind us of things. Um, and that, that relationship, uh, you know, I hope that from a difficult start, you know, where, you know, it was nobody's fault, but it was just a difficult set of, of circumstances. We have been able to build a good relationship, which is productive and, and, and fruitful. So that's going to be very important for us, you know, as we continue to move forward. 
I've included this quote. This is Mary Robinson speaking at the opening of the Women's Library, and I've included it because it struck me at the time. And I, I think the really key part of this is about listening. Um, you know, so I, I tend to talk a lot, well, I tend to talk a lot, but, um, you know, I tend to talk a lot about telling stories and, and that kind of thing, but it's a really good reminder to listen. Um, and what she, you know, she was talking about really was not trying to, to judge the past from our point of view, to put our own sort of values onto other people's view of the world, but to let women speak about their own lives in their own words and to listen and to think about what that means. And I, I think that that, you know, was a very powerful speech at the time. Um, yeah, and you can see why she worked for the UN. <laughs> um, but the last, the last point, really, I was determined to get this picture into my presentation somehow, because I just love it. Um, I just want to know what was the joke, what had happened that made everybody <laughs> crease, <laughs> crease up like this. So... There's a group of women learning about, or you know, hearing about sort of you know food and feeding their families during the Second World War, but still able. Something's obviously happened, and uh, you know they're having a good time. And I think that that's important to remember. We're very lucky and privileged to work with these collections and the people um, you know who want to to use them, and even those who don't know they want to use them yet. Um, and I think it should be fun and we should enjoy ourselves. And so that's my, my sort of final plea to you is to enjoy it. So thank you very much. <laughs>